Hi, you're very welcome. Good evening from Ireland. It is 6 p.m. Our tea time, dinner time here, and I believe it is lunchtime 1 p.m. in the States. So we're nearly finished our day here in Ireland, and you're probably halfway through in the States, depending on kind of what shifts you're on. So um, it was great to collaborate with Ashley. We have just hit it off straight away. I became aware of Ashley when she was uh, taking part in a Network West Cork event. And I was on holidays and I missed it. So reached out, of course, and we have collaborated. So just going to briefly introduce myself. So my name is Laura O'Connell. I set up my own coaching business just over two years ago now. And with that, I started networking. Um, I've grown up in a family business and I have 20 plus years of corporate experience. And when I set up, I had to network, 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 network a different way. And I was just not impressed with what was going on. And I'm going to touch a lot of this today in my presentation. Um, so that's kind of me. I'm a business and career coach. I specialize in coaching psychology and transition coaching hugely passionate about entrepreneurial mindsets, innovative mindsets, and basically anybody with an open mindset I love to work with. That's me. That's all you really kind of need to know. So what we're going, Ashley is going to actually, I'm going to present first, maybe about 15, 20 minutes, and then Ashley, Ashley will follow as well. I'm going to invite you, this is going to be an interactive presentation. It's networking. I want you to take part and get involved. So please use the chat function. I'm going to keep you engaged and interactive because I'm going to try to show you what to do this kind of networking style as well, how to keep people engaged and interactive. Use the chat function, please. Ask questions. Ashley will monitor the chat whilst I'm talking and she will interrupt and say so-and-so would like a bit more of an example or a bit more information, advice on such and such. And I would happily elaborate um, or answer as best I can on that. This is all about you guys. So I really want to make the best networking um, from everybody. So I am going to get started, Ashley, if that's okay. Absolutely, go for it. Folks, again, okay. make your questions in the chat. Um, I think bonus point, I know Dave Thompson's on the call. He's also one of the professors over here at Temple. I know some of the students are on. You guys post your questions in the chat. I'll make sure Dave knows. A little brown nosing goes a long way, uh, but, and we'll get started. Thank you so much, Laura. Bob, can you see my screen yet? Is uh, it yet? Yes, we can. Okay, this is going really slow. I did a Microsoft update yesterday and yeah, we're not getting on today. So apologies if it does run a little bit slow. And I want to come, bear with me, that's the end of it. So this is the joys of technology. Okay, it won't, sh Ashley, can you look at the settings to see, it won't let me share anymore. Okay, let's try this again. One second, try that again. Thank you very much. Can you see any joy? Not yet. Oh man, typically. Right. You think you can get it? Oh wait, it's uh, getting shared now, but you can see it now. Ah, okay, it, I was just building suspense everyone, just building up the <laughs> excitement and all of that. So thank you for your patience. So today the theme is all about networking with intention. I am going to kind of touch base on the emotional intelligence side of it. Uh, which we rarely talk about actually, or we rarely kind of even become aware of, it is hugely beneficial, but it's hugely beneficial to you and your relationships and just for professional and personal development as well. Um, so, and then Ashley is going to kind of show you how to execute uh, with all of her expertise as well, coming from her background. So I want to start off with what is emotional intelligence? Does anybody want to take a bit of a, a guess around this or join in? I'm going to really encourage lots of interaction. Is it a term maybe that might scare people? Bob Healy says awareness. Awareness. Well done. Anybody else? 
Uh, Sylvia says, putting yourself in other people's shoes. Cool. Fiona, cool. Yeah. Fiona Berry says, understanding how your actions impact others. Spot on. Okay. So it's an amalgamation of a lot of this. And when I talk about emotional intelligence, I feel we don't talk about it enough. We're just starting to talk about it. And from my psychology background, it is hugely valuable. And as I said, influential when it comes to networking. So it really is all about you. Uh, that's what emotional intelligence is. It starts with yourself, your emotions, identifying them, becoming aware of them, understanding them and also managing them so when it comes to networking or relationships just like one of the attendees said social awareness so that serves a purpose so if you can kind of start to kind of just kind of zone in on yourself so when i talk about networking how do you feel when you hear that term is it negative is it positive is it mediocre? When you're walking into a networking room or a networking event or even a virtual networking space, how are you actually feeling about it? Because I do believe majority of people, 85% of people, and I'm speaking Irish figures here, people are really nervous. They view it negatively. They don't enjoy it. So it is good to start becoming aware of this and working on it. And that is really kind of what I'd like to get to today. I really want to remove a lot of the stress, a lot of these negative emotions and stigmas. And I really want to bring in a lot more fun to it. And I want you to become more authentic and more at ease and more at yourself. So emotional intelligence, it helps you connect with yourself, with others, with people, all around the world with other businesses. So social intelligence helps you to recognize a friend from a foe. And when you bring it into kind of a business sort of a term, it helps you to recognize collaborator from a competitor, a giver to a taker. So that's kind of where it starts. And it helps you to measure other people's interests in you. Um, so I kind of hope that all makes sense. So there's kind of really four pillars to it the self-management, to the self-awareness, to the social awareness, right up to relationship management. And they don't follow structure. They're one clean circle. And some elements of these you may be very good at, and some elements you may need to work more about. And some may be a genuine blind spot. And that just means something that you're not aware of. And this is where networking can be quite beneficial. Someone else can help you become aware of it. So when we talk about self-management, as I said already, what are your emotions around networking? How can you start to kind of identify these? How can you regulate them? How can you manage them? How can you overcome them? So in terms of any sort of personal development work, this is always a good place to start with yourself. How do you turn your negative into a positive? We've all been on a first date. How do you turn that, those feelings into something good? We all have to meet somebody for the first time. Um, so it's kind of really what networking is. However, walking into a big room or a group, again, your, your, your emotions are going to be very much similar, but just remember 85% of people are feeling exactly the same way as you. And that is one way to overcome it. So self-awareness, how are you paying attention to these? Are you completely ignoring it? Are you avoiding it? Um, are, you, are you turning it on too much as in your energy, overexcited, um, any physical sensations? So have you got that churning in your stomach? Is your temperature rising? The sweaty palms? Try to kind of tune into those physical um, sensations, breathe into it, becoming aware of them, accepting, acknowledging them and breathe into it will help you to overcome it. The self-awareness, as I said, is all about you paying attention to yourself. And then from here, you can build on better to the social awareness element of it. So that's got to do with the people and the environment. So how are you sort of preempting or interpreting that environment? So if you're walking into a networking space, oh my goodness, why am I doing this to myself? I could be at home having, you know, having a nice long bath or why do I do this to myself? 
that's you interpreting your environment already. You're already kicking yourself. So you've got to try to change this kind of mindset and thinking. How are you reading the room? How are you reading the person that you're speaking to or a group? So it's kind of about tuning into those as well. And then in terms of relationship management, are you aware of what others are experiencing? So they're kind of the four pillars. And I would always start with self-awareness and self-management first. And from there, when you have a pretty good grasp of that, you can then bring it into your social awareness and your relationship management. So if and does anyone have any questions on any of these elements before I move on to the rest of the networking presentation? I just wanted to touch base on emotional intelligence and how relevant it can be to networking or your relationship building. Miss Laura, we just have a couple conversations going on in the chat just about what they're looking to hopefully gain from the presentation today. It's a lot of people who are uncomfortable with, you know, meeting somebody new, somebody who might be in the same industry. They might feel like a nuisance going up and talking to them in that space, feeling that there might be competition rather than a mentorship. And then <clears throat> just a lot of conversations around just the uncomfortableness of it being a necessary evil. So that's just the theme that's going on in the chat. Brilliant. And I am sure majority of people in this room can resonate with all of these comments. Thank you for participating. You are actually normalizing what everybody else is feeling. So this is all part of bringing more awareness to this. So when it comes to networking and to this presentation, what I'd like to really try to achieve is at least one of these, remove the stress from networking, have some fun, and progress your networking skills. It'd be great if I could tick all three boxes for you, but ideally I'd love you to walk away from here today feeling that you're now competent and confident in one of these. So today I'd like to kind of focus on what type of networker are you? What vibe are you giving off when you're networking? Givers gain, how to socially connect, how to connect and collaborate. Now, this is what I am suggesting to focus on, but I am quite happy to steer off track. If there's a general, a general theme going on in the chat room, I'm quite happy to talk about this. I really do want to meet your, your needs today, guys. So I'm going to ask you all to take to your keypads and I want you to try to identify here which one of these kind of describes the kind of networker that you are. So we're now working on self-awareness here. So are you one of these people in a big exhibition conference type networker? Are you one sitting around a table, whether it is a gala dinner or maybe you're there for a specific theme to talk about? Are you a virtual networker? We're kind of at the moment, I'd say we're majority, you know, kind of fitting this one, but look outside of COVID times as well. Are you coming along to see a professional specialist speaker, a keynote speaker, and you're, you're part of the audience? And then are you one of these fun type of networkers? I'm actually all of these. Obviously I love networking, but there's no reason why you can't be one, two, three, or flit or go through your phases and moves. So I hope that you can kind of see what type of networker you are from some of these visuals. And maybe there's ones that I haven't even brought into today, but I was just trying to be very general and kind of basic. So next, what vibe are you giving off? And this brings us into the self-management element of it. So again, going to ask you to share in the chat, which one of these resonates most with you? We've got a lot of mix and mingle answers coming in. We've got people that feel like they're very confident um, when they're in, uh, other people are inviting. Oh, everyone's chiming in. This is great. Uh, Brett feels like he's better one-on-one. -on -one. He likes the virtual. Um, Lucas says he, uh, he feels he excels in a personal setting with a condensed group of peers. So, I mean, it's all over the map, which is really nice to see. Brilliant. So as you can see from the chat, okay, I want you all now to start networking with each other. Maybe there's something that you have in common with somebody right now. So actually what I meant to say at the very beginning is I'm going to ask you not to say who you are, who you're working for, what you're trying to sell. I really want to focus here on emotional intelligence just for now and just show you how much of something that is in common with somebody else. So maybe the person here that says they're better off one-to-one one -one or one-on-one, -on -one, 
there's someone now in the chat box who has said something similar to you connect with each other this is the importance of using you using your emotional intelligence to sort of connect with someone find out what you have an interest it doesn't have to be all business doesn't have to be business cards doesn't have to be all sales so you can see we've got the shy to the person who's constantly on their phone and they're tweeting about it I can't stand those uh, you've got those who are really engaging, those who are bringing others along, and those who like to be by themselves. There is actually nothing wrong with any of these. We have to accept everybody for who they are. We're all different type of networkers. So when it comes to giver's gain, if anybody would like me to elaborate more on this, but for me, I think it's fairly bog standard. That's kind of an Irish term if people don't understand that from the States. It's very common. Um, so the best gift is you. I'm sure we've all come across the strengths and weaknesses. Um, so your strengths is someone else's weakness. And again, this is the importance of having that conversation, really tuning in and listening to what it is they're needing. So at the end of the day, we're all at a networking event. We're probably showing up all prepared to sell right now. And if I'm gonna ask actually for a show of hands, who is here to sell themselves or their business product service here today? Just be honest. And then the second question I'm gonna ask, who is here to buy today? And we're not gonna have any show of hands. So what is the point in having the majority of us here to sell if nobody is here to buy? So this is what I'm really trying to get at today. It's connections, collaborating, interest, building those relationships. So giver's gain is basically get to know the person who is organizing the event or facilitating it. Maybe you can help them. Maybe there's somebody in the room who is by themselves, not interacting. They're possibly quite shy, first time networking. Maybe you could try to identify them and hold their hand, not physically, but you know, reach out and kind of bring them along to get to talk to them. Um, is there something, is somebody here looking for, let's say for an example, we have an engineer who mightn't be so good with HR stuff. I'm sure there's a HR person then who could help the engineer and vice versa. So people with computer skills, I need people with computer skills. I'm really good with people, but when it comes to technology, as you can see, when I set up this presentation, it just wasn't working for me. So that is the gift of you. And that is the, the beauty of giver's gain. It also brings the feel good factor. So if you're going to do something for someone, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to thank you. They're going to review you, refer you, recommend you. Um, or they're never going to forget about you. And what you kind of really want to aim to do is make a long lasting impression, if at all possible. We can all suck at networking. We can have our days off. We can fumble and mumble. Um, you know, your tea can start coming up while you're talking like I just did. We don't remember these things. We do remember how somebody makes you feel or an experience. And that is really what giver's gain is. And an example that I'm going to give is myself and Ashley. So I wasn't able to make that presentation. As I said, I reached out to her and usually I'm the one offering, but Ashley was straight in, let's collaborate, let's do this. And she, she put all of this together today. And I was like, wow, I'm actually not used to somebody doing this for me or offering or gifting. And as you can see, I don't know where you all follow me on LinkedIn or Instagram. I am singing Ashley praises at the moment. And then that will give Ashley a bit of visibility, but I really do appreciate it. So that's giver's gain for you. I'm going to move very quickly on how to socially connect. And I want to try to make it more relevant to these times, if that makes sense. So it's harder whilst we are in lockdown or restricted or we're all in different states and counties right now. We all have different types of restrictions on us. We, most of us, hopefully all of us, have masks over our mouths. So it's very hard for picking up on these cues. But during COVID, whilst we are all virtually networking and it's safely done, how can you actually socially connect? So it's by using technology, befriending it, reaching out, a simple hello, 
And for us here in Ireland, I do know the benefits of how are you. It's not what can I do for you today or it's just someone to check in on you. It's a simple, hey, how are you? Haven't heard from you in a long while. Would love to catch up. That's going to make somebody feel really good rather than reaching out and kind of say, oh, I'd like to sell you this or I'd like to show you this or I've come across this really good idea. And during COVID, we have all pivoted, we've all developed further, we've all evolved, we've all upskilled and relearned. There's lots of new stuff have happened to us personally and professionally. So there's going to be something new about somebody that you are already in contact with, but maybe just haven't been in contact with. So I'm going to set everyone a challenge. Today, I want you to connect with at least one person here, one person that you don't know. Um, so one person in your country and one person who's not in your country. And I want you to connect and I want you to socially connect with them after this call. How you do that is up to you. And I'd like you all to get in touch with me down the line by next week. I'll give you, I'll give you a week sort of a deadline. I'm, I'm nice like that. And I want to hear how you got on. Um, I'd like you to implement some of what I'm giving you today and, and more than what Ashley is going to give you. But I really would like to hear back from me how if any of these tips and advice is kind of helping you so in relation to you know kind of working together connect and collaborate i have this saying and it's up on my website is if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together um and that makes an awful lot of sense so the best example myself and ashley here today we are collaborating together we connected even though we didn't virtually meet via a networking event we reached out we connected really well we're now collaborating we are two networking experts we are not treating each other competitively we are helping each other right now and we really do want to change the networking environment and the networking world and reduce that 85% of negative feelings and emotions and thoughts around networking. And we want that number to decrease and the positives to increase. So that is the benefits of connecting and collaborating together. Are there any questions coming in from anybody, Ashley, before I finish up with the virtual networking site? So you were talking, we're going through like, well, you know, how are you a giver? How are you connecting? How are you celebrating your networks? We've got a lot of great interactive conversations going on in the chat. As far as questions are concerned, um, you know, Caroline says great stuff, Laura. Guys, as far as questions on what Laura was talking about, throw them in there and I'll read them aloud. Or if you want to take yourself off mute, go ahead. We can have a chat. Um, otherwise, it's just been very much of encouraging the collaboration and what networking really means to them, um, which has been awesome. So I can read just a few of those as we wait for questions. Um, I know Anna also talks about she prefers real life and small groups. Those suit her best. And then we've got Robert uh, Geiger. He goes, when, uh, he engages in networking. He views it from the perspective of getting to know people um, whom you may be able to help. So connecting the dots uh, with the larger picture, which may be void in the absence of networking, which I thought was really great. Um, uh, Ma, she says, I love to encourage and support. Relationships are the legacy you leave when you die. And I thought that she wins the comment of the year. So, Ma, crush. Yeah, I like that. Brilliant. And then Linda has a question. She says, as someone who is shy, what is a good question to spark conversation um, in person and at online meetings? I have a whole slide on that, Ma, uh, Linda. I got you covered. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll leave that one so to you, Ashley. But just remember a simple hello. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Keep it simple. Um, and you know what? It can be very hard. This is kind of when you're looking at the social awareness element of the emotional intelligence is trying to pick up on how on someone else is feeling or what they're thinking. If their head might be down, they might be in front of their phone. They're usually avoiding or kind of cowering away a little bit. So get them involved, you know, unless someone, someone's going to be, if someone's going to be honest with you and say, I need to get this email off actually before this event starts. Yeah. But, you know, be transparent and be open about, you know, about networking. It's relationships. It's, we're all used to knockbacks. We're all used to rejections, but at least you tried. And that is part of the giver's gain as well. So 
I know Ashley has a slide coming up on virtual networking, so I don't want to kind of go too much into the virtual networking side, but um, where is it gone? Has it? There it is. Yes, we can. Make it right. Why is this happening to me? Anyway, so just about the virtual networking, um, I want everybody just to remember everybody is virtual networking right now. Yes, you may enjoy the, the, the personal face-to-face -face events, but we are limited and restricted these days. Make the most of virtual networking. Get comfortable behind your screen. You don't have to doll up and dress up and show up and think about what shoes, does your socks match this? Or do it, you know, does your chain watch this? Should I wear makeup? Everybody is virtual networking right now. Get on it, get comfortable with it and practice. It's the best way to practice. So what I'm gonna suggest is when you're in a virtual networking room, somewhat similar to this, have your full name up there. Don't have an iPhone or an iPad or a um, dastardly dog or something, you know, have your full professional name up there and even input your company name as well. Have your camera on. Okay, you might have a child on your lap. They're around us, we're, we're all remote at the moment. So the dog, the cat, the plant could be falling, the, something could fall from behind. It's virtual networking. It's put your camera on, let's put that face to a name. If you're in your pajamas, whoop de do Majority of probably have our pajama bottoms on anyway. As I said, it's tea time here in Ireland. My slippers are on. That's as far as I'm going to go with that, with that comment. I'm not going to tell you any more. But I really do want you to start showing up virtual networking. Learn to practice it. Engage with people. Uh, use the chat function. And the other one thing that I'm going to say about virtual networking is don't be the talker when you're participating. Let others speak. Learn to listen and learn from, and learn from your listening. That liminal space, that's between when someone talking and not speaking and their body language, there's lots to be said in and around that. So that's kind of my, um, my crash course on emotional intelligence, forward slash networking, forward slash relationships, forward slash life in general. And I really do kind of want you all to, you know, embrace this a lot more and practice with the virtual networking. Get it wrong. Doesn't matter. We're not going to remember it. You know, if you get it wrong and if you make a massive faux pas, you've made your long lasting memorable impression and we'll always remember you for something like that then as well. So you've won. Um, LinkedIn, if you're not on LinkedIn right now, you know, really, you're not, you're not really utilizing that competitive advantage. So if I can help anybody after this, please reach out to me, message me privately. I am more than happy to help you with any part of this presentation to help you bring out the best networking side of you. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for joining and participating. I love the energy. Thanks guys. I feed off you. Laura, thank you so very much, darling. It was amazing. And everybody, thank you for your participation and handling my stupid comments within the chat to get you all amped up. So uh, as we go into the next phase, um, throw the questions in there. We'll answer them throughout my presentation and also um, on the tail end if there's any leftover stuff. Um, everyone's saying thank you, Laura, in the, uh, in the comment section. All right. So strap in, buddies, because <laughs> Laura and I... <laughs> Uh, have a lot of energy, but I, my antibiotics have kicked in. So aren't right, everybody lucky? Uh, let's put this up. Share my screen. Let's do this. And then let's do, nope, that's from Dave Thompson. Hold on. Let's do that. You can see it, Laura, we're good. Perfect. All right, folks, this is Networking with Intention Part 2. My name is Ashley Owens. I'm a networking concierge. Before we go into the fun things about myself, let's just go into the funny things about myself. So I'm originally from North Jersey. That's in Jer that's a Jersey thing. No, I don't know anybody from the from the Jersey Shore. That show, I, I don't know. Don't ask me anymore. I don't know. Uh, but I'm a fast talker. Uh, we have the best bagels. Um, I don't, I'm sure you guys have bagels in Ireland, but this is how stupid I am. Bagels? Yeah, of course. But there's really good bagels in North Jersey because all the Jews and the Italians come from New York and then they come in and they make the bagels in Jersey. It's a whole thing. 
Uh, I have no kids, I'm a very fat cat. So again, talking about virtual networking, if you're around and you've got cats jumping on your lap or dogs or children, or whatever it may be, that's the world we live in now. And I don't apologize for my fat cat. His name is Zen, but we call him other things when he's being bad. And it's entirely my fault that he is that bad. Uh, I, my background, I'm previously a celebrity personal assistant, which just means I have a lot of therapy bills and a lot of NDAs I have to sign. That was in uh, New York City. I've competed in CrossFit competitions, which just means I can pick stuff up and put stuff down. That's really all it is, and I survived it. When I was cool, I could deadlift 225 pounds. Now I can barely lift an iPod. Uh, I came in 31st place out of 34, which just means I survived the competition. Uh, karaoke champ. 2016, which just means tequila was involved, and I just outlasted everybody else. I've been in 12 movies as an extra, which just means that I can fall asleep anywhere because you're on set for, you know, 16 hours at a time. I've got this weird skill where I can sleep on planes, trains, and automobiles. And I once ate a Carolina Reaper. Thank you, Bob Healy, for thinking that I'm legit. I am not anymore. Walking up the stairs to take out my trash, I almost passed out. So uh, let's go back. So I once ate a Carolina Reaper. Anybody know what a Carolina Reaper is? No? It's a no? pepper, a really hot pepper. Who said that? It's John. Hi, John. <laughs> Hello, Ashley. That's a bad, it's a bad life choice. It's a bad life. That's what that is. That's a Carolina Reaper. That was also on a dare. So now that you've got a little bit more about me, my background is I'm, I'm a networking concierge. I train sales teams and business professionals how to virtually network tactically and tangibly. Everyone's freaking out of the chat. <laughs> Great. Good to know that you all know what a Carolina Reaper is. Okay. So now that we've had our laughs, let's go into more of what we're going to be talking about today. So here's the agenda. Reality of virtual networking, steps to get started, knowing yourself, knowing your audience, planning your work and working your plan, tools and resources, and then questions on how myself or Laura can help. So ideally what you want to recognize is that the knowing yourself is extremely important. So with the emotional intelligence that Laura had talked about, you really want to incorporate a lot of those skill sets before you even start the networking activity. So that way when you do the actual tangible activity of following up, reaching out, you already feel at, at a point where you can present yourself and communicate effectively. Here's the problem with people, because people have problems. So here's what the norm is right now. So most professionals are operating virtually, right? So we are still in the process. I know it's been six months. We're still trying to figure out what the new norm is. Everyone's talking about what the new norm might be. Let's make it very clear. Either you've leaned into it or you're completely ignoring it. The point, if you're ignoring it and waiting for things to go back to normal, you've already missed the boat. You missed the boat. So moving forward from today, lean into the fact that we have to take everything virtually and start catering your personality and how you're communicating to adapt to that new um, criteria. It's extremely important because we don't know what's going to happen next week. We don't know what's going to happen six months from now. You have to pivot. And then you've got people who don't know have, a, have a clue on how to join a webinar, even though they've received emails four times with detailed instructions. How many times have you been in a group chat or a networking organization and someone is like, what's the Zoom link? I don't know what the Zoom link is. I didn't see this. It's Teams or what do we do? And you're like, for the love of God, Carl, please scroll down in the email. Just scroll down. So technology becomes an issue and becomes a little bit of a challenge, but we have been able to adapt. But then you've got to you know, manage different personalities and comfort levels. And then are you able to connect with new people? Is it appropriate to connect with new people? Are people still going through, you know, not getting the stimulus package or not being able to feed their families? Like everything's really up in the air with a lot of different uh, uh, industries, especially the restaurant industry. Um, and things are slowly getting back to, you know, kind of making it work, but you just don't know. So it's a little bit unhinged. Um, and then are pants optional? As we've noticed with Laura, maybe not. Maybe you don't need pants all the time, but you've got a good little top and you're making it work, you know, make sure that your professionalism stays up to par when you're on a conversation, when you're in conversations with somebody new and when you're doing these networking calls because their first impression is now your first impression because you may not have met them before, you may not have been on a call before with them, so you want to still be the same kind of person virtually as they would meet you in person. Awesome, awesome. So glad, Lynn, you can relate to the no pants rule. All right, so here's the reality. 
only people so when you're looking to meet new people and engage in a way that's intentional with building up a network these are people or groups of people that will advocate for you when you're not in the room here's the reality of who you need to have in your group like just the baseline human behavior you know foundation of the kinds of people you want to even network with only people who genuinely care are going to talk to you and not at you like an Italian mother during Christmas time asking when you're going to have kids. Only people who genuinely care are going to help you anyway. They're not going to go out and say, oh, oh you know, well, uh, could you please, you know, well, apparently I just had a stroke in my brain. Only people who genuinely care are going to help you anyway. You won't have to go out and ask them, hey, can you help me with this? Hey, can you help me with this? You're giving them value before you even meet them in some way. We're going to talk more about how to do that. So people who actually give a damn are going to want to help you. They're, they're innately going to want to help you. And then only people who genuinely care are going to ask you for realistic favors. They're not going to go up and say, hey, Chad, can you, you know, spend $10,000 on this virtual conference um, with no background and they haven't built the know, the like, and the trust factor with you. So as you're talking to somebody, anybody new, or even your current network, if they don't hit this criteria first, they don't belong in their network. They don't. You have to go through. Are, do they generally talk to you? Will they help me anyway? Are they, at, you know, are they asking for realistic favors? A realistic favor is asking, hey, would you mind sharing this post for this a webinar or event that I'm going to? That would be super, super helpful. And then, oh, here's an interactive question. What's the maximum number of people we can maintain relationships and have social interactions with? There's about 10 people on this call that have seen this presentation before. Do not cheat. Put it in the chat. How many people? Ma, close, not 250. Unlimited, Doug, stop it. Depends on the person as when they can handle once. Amy, you're close. 150, Doug, you've seen this presentation, you butt. 150, Doug wins. So 150 people, and the way that we got this number is, uh, there's a British anthropologist, his name is Robin Dunbar. So according to this theory, the tightest circle has just five people. Those are loved ones. That's followed by a successive layer of 15 good friends, 50 friends, 150 meaningful contacts, and 500 acquaintances, and then 1,500 people that you can recognize. People will migrate in and out of these layers, but the idea is that the space has to be carved out for anybody else to come in. So if you exceed 150 people, a network is unlikely to last long or cohere well. So that's where we get the 150 uh, amount of people from. So that means you do not have to network with every single Joe, Dick, or Harry. That means that you can be very specific about and intentional about who you network with. Okay, story time. Um, ba, ba, ba. So this is my favorite story, just because it's, it's relevant to networking. So everyone knows who Paul Revere is, especially in the States. Paul Revere wrote from Boston, April 18, 1775, sounded the alarm for the Revolutionary War, raised a militia. He's the guy that we know in history. William Dawes, anybody know who William Dawes is? Not really, sometimes not really. Okay, good, because William Dawes did the exact same thing. He wrote from Boston, 1775, sound of the alarm, revolutionary war had begun. He rode south. Didn't matter which way he, they, they, they took the ride, they both did the exact same thing. But the reason why history remembers Paul Revere is because Paul Revere was an information broker. So an information broker is a person who occupies a key role in social network by connecting unrelated groups of people. So because he targeted well-connected people during his ride, his news then spread wildly and quickly. And William Dawes, he wasn't an information broker, so he didn't really know what doors to knock down when he entered that small town. So here's the moral of that story. Take into concept, or take this concept into consideration with your own businesses. If that information isn't delivered to the right people, are you gonna fall into obscurity like William Dawes? Okay, 
Now that you understand how to communicate well, especially with Laura's presentation and your mindset to go into those meetings or to, or to start communicating effectively with new power partners, here's what networking virtually is. These are actual activities that you could be doing that qualify as networking activity. So what you're doing is, is that are you building a, an engagement on your LinkedIn profile? Are you co commenting on different subject matter experts feel, uh, are you different, if you're commenting on different industry related topics that, that you specialize in? Are you staying in front of your current network with thoughtful content? Are you building new professional relationships? Are you reaching out to past clients or vendors or people that have advocated for you in the past and checking in for a 15 minute introduction call? Are you learning and developing a new skill from a local subject matter expert? We all suck at something. So why not go and start having those conversations and expanding your knowledge on a particular topic because that person who knows more than you probably knows more people too. So building that relationship will expand the quality of contacts that you have. And then are you nurturing your network by staying engaged with their content? And we're going to talk about what engaging content looks like, especially very more, uh, especially more intentionally. So we talked about knowing yourself. Um, so I like taking the DISC assessment. Knowing yourself is important, especially when you're talking about emotional intelligence. I know Laura can definitely suggest other emotional intelligence assessments, but as you're going into a networking activity, if you know that you're always going to suck at the big crowds, why would you sit and go to an event, park your car in the parking lot and sit there and have an anxiety attack? If that's not in your blood to be able to do that, then just triple down on the strengths and the activities that actually make sense for you and your personality. Women, especially, like we try to overcompensate for everything all the time. So sometimes looking at and taking an assessment of that nature to figure out what I will be, what, what I'm good at, then tripling down those strengths, I could see it on black and white that I can start really focusing on those activities. So you take these assessments or at least you start recognizing and having a different mindset of what kind of networker you are and then advocating and putting on activity that works with your personality. Because networking is a human to human interaction. It's a, it's a marketing opportunity, not a sales activity. Triple down strengths, ma. Cool. All right, here's who to network with. These are the top three groups of people you should be virtually networking with. Strategic partners. These are professionals who are in complementary businesses who share the same target market. What I love to say about strategic partners, um, especially with Laura and I, because we do something similar, but we're in the same sandbox. We're just building different castles. And at some point, we're going to build um, an empire. Right. So think of those people in your group or in your in the pipeline of your um, of your of your client. Who else would they have to talk to before they get to you. Right. Those are your strategic partners. So think of like a real estate agent and a divorce lawyer. OK, those are strategic partners, because when someone's getting divorced, they're either upsizing or they're downgrading. And that way you can use each other as a great referral or a vendor partner. So in your own industry, take a look, take five minutes. Not, I mean, after this, but take five minutes and think about the industries that are complementary to your field. And those are the kinds of people you need to be networking with and being in groups with as well. Subject matter experts. These are people that are better than you on something, maybe LinkedIn experts, maybe networking experts, maybe um, Excel experts, maybe somebody who's in leadership training, people who are better than you in a particular topic that you want to expand on. Again, these people specialize in a specific area. These are great people to keep involved in because they also have a, a, a big network as well. And then your current network. How are you nurturing that network? Are you giving them a call? Are you jumping on a, a catch up call every month to see how they're doing to see if their their um, introductions have expanded. Maybe they've got somebody else that they can introduce you to that's staying top of mind by giving a damn. Cool. Next. How are we doing on time? Cool. Uh, communicating effectively. Oh, do we want any questions in the chat love? Uh, no questions yet, Ashley, but I want to say a high five to Doug, who has actually been taking on board some of the advice and tips and has reached out to two people. So just whilst you were speaking and to just try to give you a little bit of a breath as well, because I know your throat isn't, uh, isn't well, so take a sip. 
I've asked everybody not to post their contact details generally. I want you actually to really take on board what we're both trying to teach you today. Reach out personally. You are cheating if you do it generally. Reach out personally to people and get to know them and connect in a different way. Utilize your emotional intelligence skills. Come on, you've got this. Share, ask questions, get involved. No cheating allowed. You can do this. Laura's going to come down, guys, and she's going to come and beat everybody up. And I'm low-key scared of her, so do what she says before we have to leave. Uh, okay, great. So the next question or the next uh, area I want to go into is really how to communicate effectively. These are great things to pay attention to when you're, when you're reaching out to somebody new or when you're continuing to nurture the current network, a subject matter expert or a strategic partner. In the conversation, you want to make your name memorable, but you want to give, your, uh, give yourself permission to engage in a way that's a bit vulnerable. Nobody cares about what you do. Nobody cares about what you do. But if, you, if they like you when you leave, you did the right thing. The conversation needs to be more than just, who are you? What, what do you do? What can you sell me? Blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. If you give yourself a way and permission to be vulnerable, then you find a commonality with that person. How do you want them to think about you when you leave the conversation? You always want to end a conversation with the future in mind. If it was a good conversation, schedule another meeting. You all have phones, you're all behind your computer, put it on the calendar and do it for a monthly call, monthly check-in because trash brain will forget or use a CRM system, a client relationship management system to be able to keep track of those tasks. I've got a few options for you as well. You want to plan structured next type of conversations. The first 15 minute intro call, the first half hour Zoom call to get to know this person or a get to know you session. The next one should have more structure to it. Hey, we talked about X, Y, and Z. Here are the things I would love to help you with and making sure that they also know what they promised you as well. Recognizing storytelling opportunities. I don't give a damn about what you do. I do not care. I care how you fixed a problem because that is going to identify how I'm able to make that introduction to you and for you. Build a diverse network. It's extremely important to build a diverse, we all network with people that look like us. It's human behavior. I challenge you to jump in on a different culture, on a different sex, on a different race, on a different committee that you would have never even thought to jump in on because let me tell you something the best opportunities i ever had was when i was the most uncomfortable for my own bias i cannot tell you how much fun and how much how bigger how how big my my network has has gone just because i took the opportunity to start being uncomfortable now the reason why a highly diverse network uh, can help the reason why a highly diverse network is really important is because it helps you develop a more complete and creative and unbiased view of issues, okay? And when you trade information or skills with people who experiences differ from your own, you provide one another with a unique and exceptionally valuable resource. So think of opening up your brain and opening up your growth potential by jumping in on this highly diverse uh, networking opportunities. Cool, question in, yes. Ashley, we have two questions. Okay. So let me just ask, how do you seek out mentors without seeming too forward or needy? I love that question. Yeah, you and can. And Sylvia also asks, oh, she's popped up. Hang on, let me catch her again. Okay. Do you have any tips for non-native English speakers like herself that can be daunting to not everybody has linguistic empathy? Ah, okay. So let's go to the first question. Um, and that was more on not feeling needy. Think of when you ask, when you have the ask, the ask is, I would love to learn more about your business and how you got started. Would you be open to a 15 minute introduction call? Keep it, just get the meeting. Open the door up for an informational interview. You're saying, I am this person, I, 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 I'm assuming this is a student. So um, I go to this school, I find what you're doing fascinating. I really like X, Y, and Z. Like give them a, like, give them a little bit of a compliment um, and ask them, would you be interested in jumping on a 15 minute intro call for me, uh, with me? So I ask a few questions about your business. And that allows that person to be, to, to know what the conversation is about and to open the door for a potential mentorship. But don't ask for the mentorship until you get on a call with them. They could be jerks, you don't know. 
um, but open the door and be very upfront and honest and be complimentary because they get a thousand messages a day. Just because they didn't respond doesn't mean that they, that they saw it either. So don't get discouraged if you send out 50 you know, messages to these subject matter experts and they don't get back to you. It happens, it happens. So open the door up, keep it as simple as possible and just be honest with them. And then the next question, oh, so I had Two of my best contacts are actually in Mexico. They do um, LinkedIn uh, profile building. And these guys um, had a little bit of a thicker accent, but were trying so hard on the call. And I've given them so much business because they not only tried on the call to, to, to be able to communicate with me, but because their work spoke for themselves, for themselves. So, it's important to recognize that if people are not um, sensitive to the fact that you can speak more than one language and us dumb Americans can usually speak with just the one language, then that's their problem. That's not yours. So do not ever feel like you cannot talk to somebody else, especially when you were speaking a, a, another language to communicate effectively with them. That's their problem if they have the issue. If you'd like to preface the conversation in the message to say, hey, just letting you know, my English isn't so great, but I'd still love to talk to you. Just want to give you a heads up. You can do that to kind of give them a heads up, but otherwise that's their problem if they have an issue. It's their problem. That's ignorance. And Linda, yes, don't hang out with people who don't have linguistic sympathy because they don't want to give the time to, yeah, exactly, bye, cool. Good? Sweating, put on the fan so I look like Beyonce. Okay, so next is um, tracking the value of networking opportunities. We had talked about that. Um, we're gonna go into some tools and resources. Here are some pro tips. Um, let's go back. So when we talked about like LinkedIn activity and networking activity, there's a really cool um, process called the $1.80 method. So as you're building engagement on LinkedIn as a subject matter expert in your field, or even just a thought leader in, in some type of area or skill set, there's a $1.80 method um, called, uh, uh, there's a method called the $1.80 method where you comment thoughtfully on relevant hashtags in your industry. You put your two cents on those posts that have those trending hashtags. So what you do is you follow 10 hashtags that are relevant to your industry, like women in business, hashtag networking, hashtag virtual networking, whatever it may be. And then you follow the trending, uh, uh, trending um, uh, posts with those hashtags and then you comment thoughtfully. Reason why is because more people are seeing it and it's relevant to your industry. From there, you will end up getting more contacts or more requests. When you get a request of, um, to connect with somebody, especially if they're in, in or around your industry, ask for a 15 minute introduction call. Because they're connecting with you, they're already opting in. Open the door for a meeting. The next is everyone's an idiot. Ta-da! That's pretty much it. Everyone's an idiot, which means that you are responsible for the follow-up. Do not wait for them to get back to you. Do not pretend that they're gonna get back to you. I'm talking to my students right now. So many have, have screwed up inter, inter, uh, inter, wow, good morning. So many have screwed up internships with me because they told me they give me a call or they told me they get back to me via email and I heard nothing. That lack of effort or that lack of follow-up means that I cannot trust you to do anything in my business. I can't, I can't trust you to take the initiative and that's the kind of people that I need on my team. So when it comes to the follow-up, you are responsible. Take notes during the meeting, say thank you after the phone call and say, I would really love to connect next week. Do you have some time on X, Y, and Z date? Um, thank you so much for talking about this. I look forward to following up with this. This also keeps your trash brain aligned with who you spoke with and what you guys talked about. You can also use a CRM system to also capture that conversation so you know how you can best help them later on. Yes, my follow-up and accountability. Um, ba, ba, ba. The next is, oh, 
let's go back to this one. I'm going to skip the third and the fourth just because we're running out of time. But on the everyone's an idiot fit, if you want to take your networking to the next level, try to stop saying this. Stop saying, let me know if you'd like to chat or how can I help you? What you're really saying there is, I didn't take the time to think through what I can do for you, nor what you can do for me. You do not go into a conversation with an action plan in your own head. You are now leaving it up to them to figure out ways to help you. You're not really walking into that networking phone call with intention. So let's repeat that. Let me know if you'd like to chat or how can I help you? What you're really saying is I didn't take time to think through what I can do for you, nor what you can do for me. So take it to the next level and go in there with some fire. Cool. Next. Um, deep meaningful business conversation questions. When someone picks up the phone to call you, what problem are they having? This is my favorite question to ask when I'm on a networking call. You guys will also get all of this, these templates afterwards. I know you're all taking notes, but you're going to get everything afterwards. I think you promise. I see you, Hala. Um, so there is, um, these are the questions to ask within a networking phone call or getting to know somebody new. The reason why is because it's twofold. The ones I like to ask are when someone picks up the phone to call you, what problem are they having? It tells them what problem that they're trying to fix and how they fix it. Who are your strategic partners, which some people may not have that answer to it, so that's okay. And then what are you struggling with the most right now? The reason why that is good is because it, it allows them to answer, oh, right now our marketing sucks, or right now my you know, accounting is, is BS, or I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. You then have such a network that now you can provide value by making a recommendation or making a referral for that person. So that's opening the door to be able to help your other referral and strategic partners. So you're not only getting to know this person, but you're also being able to make the introductions to other people within your own network. So those are my favorite questions to ask. You guys will get a whole copy of these questions as well. Bye, Gary. <clears throat> All right, tools and resources. Obviously, these are the things to use. These are the tools that I use on a daily basis. LinkedIn, obviously. HubSpot. That is a free CRM tool to use. It tracks all of your emails, your contacts. I use it religiously. It's amazing. If you take anything from this conversation today, use Calendly, especially if you're an avid, avid, avid networker, especially if it gets a little bit too overwhelming. Um, Calendly is a link that will sync up to your calendar, only show available times. But the benefit of using that is within the calendar link, it asks questions of the person who's putting that appointment on the calendar. The reason why that is important is because now you know where they came from. Do they come from LinkedIn? Do they come from an introduction? Do they come from a referral? Do they come from a, a newsletter that you put out? The reason why, again, that that is important is because using those metrics, what you can see is, is that you, after every quarter, you can pull all of where your calls came from, all of where your meetings came from, and see where you spend most of your time. So in 2018, I took like 346 calls. 144 came from word of mouth. They put a name in the, the context of the, the calendar link um, and then other and then LinkedIn. Now this has changed. I think I've done 450 since the beginning of the year. So my, my, my calls have gone exponentially more, you know, higher, but then being able to look at the metrics and say, oh, okay, this is where all my calls are coming from and where I'm spending my most time. For the longest time, I thought my newsletter that I was spending four hours on a week was giving me people. No, one limited person. So I, I scaled back the activity that I had to, um, to, to, uh, to make it so that way I wasn't working my tail off on one activity that wasn't proving to be fruitful. Cool. Next, LinkedIn templates. Remember we talked about when the door is open, when you do that dollar ED method and some people start to connect with you, open the door for a conversation. This works 95% uh, of the time. This template right here. Thank you for reaching out to connect. I hope you and your family are safe and sound during this pandemic. Since we're now connected, I'd like to learn more about what you do. Hopefully I can provide value. Let's set up a time, this is not a sales call. And here's the introduction call link there. You keep it simple, stupid. You tell them what your intentions are. You make it easy. You provide value. If they say no, then yes, don't connect with them. 
You want to get to the people that are in your network, but this is a great template to use. Cool. Ah, we're done. Thank God. Knowing yourself, making your name memorable, proactively reaching out to building your networking capacity. I mean, these are all things you guys know. You, you know how to network. It's just actively using different tools to make them the most um, fruitful in, in your activity. Um, you want to, to, to Laura's point, you want to fail hard and fail fast and move on. You want to screw up on the deep, meaningful business conversation questions because you won't do it again. You want to put your foot in your mouth. You want your cat to scratch your eyeballs out before you get on the call and say, listen, man, just letting you know my eye is coming out of my socket. We're just going to talk through this because I still want to get to know you. You know, there's things you can do to make yourself memorable. There's things you can do to make yourself human. Networking is a marketing activity and not a sales activity. So as you're putting yourself out there, stop selling yourself. Nobody's buying. Nobody gives a damn. Think of you as marketing yourself out there for people to engage with that is meaningful. Okay. And then this link right here, which you will all get after the presentation, is a link to all of the virtual training that I've had. This is specifically for this group alone, and it has all the trainings that I've done in the past, as well as um, the links to all of those um, resources that I talked about, and other videos with uh, LinkedIn experts, so that way you can kind of see both ends of the coin, and then a bunch of downloadable um, tips that you guys can use on a daily basis. So that is all there. I'm exhausted. You want to take it away, Laura? <laughs> Thank you. Well done, Ashley. Thank you. Uh, really, even I learned some stuff there. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. And thank you all as well for interacting, getting involved. Um, now, I did promise I'm just going to give Ashley a bit of a break here and before everybody kind of logs off. Who has reached out to somebody on the call that you don't know? And are you connecting? I want to see, use the reactions. And I want to see a thumbs up and or even hands up i hear patrick's doing some stuff yeah Crushing it. What i want to bring to your attention here is many people were posting their linkedin as an example into the general i personally switch off if you're doing this you're not interested in me you're interested in getting followers so do you see the difference when you reach out to somebody personally that's, that's the beauty of the emotional intelligence fact. So I'm hoping that you can get working on this a lot more and bring your personality and your personal interest, your curiosity to all of this. Honestly, if, if I see general uh, contact details and you're trying to sell, I'm not interested. I'm only interested if you're interested in what we can share, help, learn, collaborate, connect all of that and that that is the effective networker i put into my chat in the last two months alone 75 percent of my business has come from virtual networking and referrals that is powerful so if you can do this right it can make a huge difference to your business my energy and my smiling is coming from my business so there you go and then i get to share all of this then as well with you folks so I hope that will help you. William, did you have a question? Your hand's raised. Oh, sorry. I was raising my hand for uh, the connecting to people I didn't know before. Nice. My apologies. Oh. Brilliant. See that, Dave? That's your student. Pretty sure. Right? Excellent. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you very much. You'll receive an email from myself and Laura afterwards. Um, we appreciate you jumping on the call. Any more questions, you can reach out to us independently. Sarah, so good to see you. And I am looking forward to connecting with you guys on a different level. Um, and we're so thrilled that we were able to collaborate from Ireland all the way to Philadelphia. So thank you all very much. And use the hashtag networking with intention to continue on the conversation and to continue on connecting. Hashtag networking with intention. Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. I'm going to be all over it. I'm going to start searching for you. Hashtag networking with intention. It's the best way to connect after these types of virtual networking calls. Well done, everyone. Thanks so much, Ashley. Bye, guys. Have a good day.